Hello, nowadays we are hearing news about a new kind of virus, right? So we know that it is a monkeypox virus. Already around 18,000 cases have already been reported on this monkeypox virus. Now what is this monkeypox virus? What is the genetic composition of this monkeypox virus? How did it start and how is it spreading and how fatal it is going to be? So all of that regarding the vaccination, the treatment plan, the diagnosis. So I shall discuss in detail each and every single point. So first of all, let's start with this monkeypox. Now this monkeypox is also called as viral zoonosis. Now what is, what do you mean by viral zoonosis? Viral zoonosis in the sense, if the virus gets transmitted from the animals to the humans, that is called as viral zoonosis. So if you look at the genetic composition of this monkeypox virus, let us look at the genetic composition of this uh, monkeypox virus. All of you know that it has got its own genetic material that is DNA, right? And you know that DNA is double stranded. Normally, usually DNAs are spirally coiled, right? But this DNA is linear and moreover, it is enveloped. So it is an enveloped double stranded DNA. Okay, which is absolutely linear. Now, this monkeypox belongs to the genus Orthopox virus. Okay, and it belongs to the family Pox viridae. You know, even smallpox also belongs to the same family Pox viridae, right? Yeah. Now, when you look at the causes, what is the main cause of this monkeypox is still unknown, but the research is tell that the African rodents and the monkeys itself are responsible for causing this monkeypox. So if you look at how severely this disease has been progressed in some nations, we basically classify this, I mean there are two basic genetic clades which you can say, okay. So this virus is more in two places, one is your Western Africa, and the other one is your Central Africa. Central Africa in the sense, uh, the Congo Basin. Okay. So one in the Congo Basin, that is the Central Africa and one in the Western Africa. So in these two places, in these two countries, the virus progression has been too much. If you compare these two places, that is Central Africa as well as Western Africa, the disease severity and the transmission of the disease is more severe in Central Africa in comparison with the Western Africa. If you look at the natural host, okay, if you look at the natural host of this monkeypox, the rope squirrels, tree squirrels, Gambian pouched rats, as well as dormice. So these are considered as a natural host of this monkeypox virus. Now let us study the outbreaks of this, right? So the first outbreak, the first outbreak happened among the monkeys itself in 1958. But the first outbreak where the humans got affected, the first human case was in 1970. Now this happened to a 9 month old boy. This 9 month old boy got in contact with some pets or uh, some, some animals like rodents and monkeys and all. So that's how this 9 month old boy has contracted this disease. And this happened when this happened in 1970 and this is reported as the first human case. Since then, since 1970, human cases of this monkeypox have been reported in many different nations. I mean, in 11 different African countries. In Nigeria, in Liberia, in Sierra Leone, in uh, South Sudan, in Cameroon, Congo, as well as Gabon. So in all these areas, in all, in all these African countries, this virus progression has been reported from 1970. Monkeypox is a disease of global public health importance and it not only affects the African countries. I have told you the Central Africa and the Western Africa are the most affected countries, right? It not only affects these African countries, but also affects the countries outside the Africa. You know, the disease started within the African countries. But outside the Africa, the first case was reported in United States of America in 2003. So in 2003, a man 
from Ghana, he bought some pets like, you know, Gambian rats and dormice to United States and somehow, somehow they were in contact with the pet dogs of United States of America. And that's how these pet dogs of United States, the American pet dogs got contracted with this disease. And right then, 70 cases of monkeypox are reported in humans in United States in 2003. From then, the disease has been progressed to many different nations. Not only that, not only that, uh, one of the African country, you know, it is Nigeria. So travelers from Nigeria have traveled to many different places. For example, the first case in Israel reported in September 2018. This was because of the travelers from the Nigeria. And travelers from the Nigeria went to UK in September 2018, where the first case of monkeypox was reported. Later on in December 2019, May 2021 and May 2022, there were many travelers from Nigeria to UK, right? And there were many cases, many cases of monkeypox which have been reported in the United Kingdom. And even, even in recent years, in May 2019, uh, travelers from the Nigeria have traveled to Singapore and many people in the Singapore were contracted with this virus. If you look at the transmission of this virus, I already told you it is a zoonotic infection, right? So the transmission is from animals to humans. Now, how it is getting transmitted from animals to humans? For example, if you come across an infected dog, right? If you touch the lesions of the infected dog, so through contact, you can get the infection. Second thing is that, second thing is that you can contract the infection via blood you can contract the infection via body fluids for example if there is an infected person or let us say an infected animal right and if you are in contact with the body fluids of that infected animal then you will contract the disease not only that cutaneous and mucosal lesions right of the infected animals can also infect humans so, body fluids, blood, the cutaneous as well as mucosal lesions are the main route of transmission. And if you, if you look at the risk factors, what can aggravate the progression, right? What can, what can cause the progression more rapidly? The first thing is, if, if you have eaten improperly cooked meat, for example, if there is an infected animal, you don't know that that animal is having monkeypox, and you started eating that animal without properly being cooked. Improperly or inadequately cooked meat or any kind of animal products that can contract the infection to you. Once you contract the infection from the animal, right? Once you get the infection from the animal. Now, can, can a human transmit this virus to another human? Yes. Now, how can a human, infected human with monkeypox can transmit the infection to another human? through respiratory droplets, respiratory secretions. Not only that, through contact skin lesions. For example, uh, I have got monkeypox eruptions on my skin. Now, if the fluid from that eruption comes in contact with another person, obviously he can contract the disease. He can contract that infection. Not only that, even the placental transmission also. Through placenta, if the virus gets transmitted, you call it as congenital monkeypox. Now, the question is, does this virus get really sexually transmitted? The concepts are really unclear so far. If you look at the signs and symptoms, guys, right? For example, today, if I have contracted with this infection, right? So let us say, uh, right now I'm standing in front of you. I got monkeypox. Now, from now till the time the symptoms appear in my body, so that you call it as incubation period, all of you know. The basic incubation period here will be 6 to 13 days. It can also range from 5 to 21 days. So the infection is basically divided into two periods guys. One is called as the invasive period and the other one is called as the skin eruption period. Now what is this invasive period? Invasive period happens within you know one to five days. Okay invasive period happens within one to five days. Within this one to five days of time then the symptoms like fever may appear. The symptoms like severe headache, very intense headache. And all of you know, there were, you have some lymph nodes, right? You have submandibular lymph nodes, preauricular, postauricular, occipital. So you can have lymphadenopathy. Lymphadenopathy is the most characteristic feature here. 
Next, you can have a very severe back pain. You can have myalgias and asthenia. You know, you feel a lot of weak. So all these things happen within one to five days. After that, after that, for the next one to three days, you come across a period called a skin eruption period. And when does skin eruption period happen? Skin eruption period happens after one to three days after fever. Okay. And these skin eruptions, these skin eruptions, where do they happen? They mainly happen on the face. In 95% of your body proportion, mainly the eruptions happen on your face. Right. So most of the eruptions are concentrated on your face. Next, your palms and soles, it would be 75%. Let us say 20% for your conjectiva, right? 30% eruptions are seen on your genitalia and 70% eruptions are seen on your oral mucous membranes. Now, how does this eruption start? First of all, you will find a macule. I know what, what do you mean by macule? Macule is completely plain right it is completely plain it is not elevated it is just plain like a rash now macule will slowly progress to papule and papule will later progress to vesicle you know vesicle in the chicken pox also you have got vesicles right when you puncture the vesicle you see the serous fluid coming out of that so first you're gonna see a macule macule can progress to papule papule can progress to vesicle and vesicle can accumulate pus and now you call it as pustule and after two to three weeks what is going to happen is that this pustule will completely become dry and and it will fall off and that you call it as crust so regarding the prevention basically we give vaccines but there is no specific vaccine for this monkeypox virus so the vaccine which we were already using for smallpox that is a smallpox virus vaccine Scientists, the doctors tell that this vaccine is 85% effective. The smallpox vaccine is 85% effective in preventing this monkeypox virus. But in 2019, to prevent this monkeypox virus, they have introduced a vaccine, right? And obviously, this vaccine is well known to everyone. So, this is a modified attenuated vaccinia virus, right? Where they use this Ankara strain. So this is basically used to prevent this monkeypox virus. So after the vaccination for prevention and all, uh, regarding the treatment and all guys, there is no specific treatment because, you know, smallpox, I hope all of you know smallpox virus, right? So smallpox and monkeypox, both of them have the same features. Both of them have the same, they share the same genetic material, right? The genetic nature is similar in both of them. So obviously, uh, there is no specific treatment for monkeypox, but we use the same treatment as we use for smallpox. The treatment protocols for monkeypox is similar to that of the treatment protocols which we use for smallpox. So basically, we give pain medications and next thing you know that whenever the patient is having fever and whenever is contracted a viral infection, there will be a lot of dehydration. So we give a supportive treatment. I mean, we start giving fluids to the patient. So fluids, pain medication. But if the patient is severely ill, then you can use a specific antiviral agent that is called as Ticovirimat. Okay, so that is an antiviral drug which you basically use. So apart from this, regarding the treatment protocol, regarding the vaccination and all, regarding the care, whatever, whatever has to be taken for monkeypox, it is exactly similar to that of the smallpox, right? So whatever treatment protocols we have used, whatever vaccines we have used to prevent smallpox, the same thing you can use in monkeypox because they are 85% effective in preventing this monkeypox. So this is all the information which is given in CDC as well as World Health Organization. So if there are any new things to be discussed, I'll definitely update in a new video. Thank you so much for watching. Goodbye.